You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. And with that sound, it can only mean one thing, and that is... Thing is for doing, and we're here doing another after show on AfterBuzz TV. This is True Blood Season 6, Episode 8, titled Dead Meat. I'm your host, JC, and before we go any further, let us introduce our wonderful panel, the host... Starting with the lovely lady to my left. I have to say that specifically because you will always jump in. Of course. I need to cut in there. Hi, guys. I'm Sarah Stratton. And, of course, the lovely man next to you. I'm Scott Moore. Good to be here. Got a great show. We have a fantastic... We got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. And no show would be complete without our without our very own Warlow himself. Hey, guys. It's Stephen Lemieux. <laughs> Let's go again. Yes. <laughs> Oh no! Thank you, Steven. Our, our chat roll is down. Again? Ah! I think that like your this is a conspiracy. Is it's a conspiracy. We had some serious issues with chat roll. We're working on the chat roll, guys. So if you guys are watching us live, hello. But if you're not, make sure to tune in on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, OneCast. Let us know what you think. Send us your comments. Send us your questions. Send us your trivia answers because we will be playing trivia mm -hmm. a little bit later. But first. I've changed things up this week. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> yes. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? You know how we usually talk about our initial thoughts on the episode? Mm hmm Yes. Well, okay. I mean, it tends to be the routine. <laughs> exactly. Episode eight, and that's what we do every week. Okay. So. Well, I'm going to change it up. Just, I gave it a fancy title. We're going to call it Things I Learned. Things I Learned Today? Yes. <laughs> I feel like that's your mother's lesson, you know, when you wake up. She's like, you know, every day you've set out in life to, like, learn something mm -hmm. new. That, that's not what, you're what did you learn from, from this? The, Reminiscing. The more you know. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> destiny sucks. I don't know. That was a message <laughs> I kind of got. What did you guys learn today? What did what Scott? You're always wanting to chime in and break it down. What did you learn on tonight's episode? What did well, we pick up? Well, let's see. We learned quite a few things. Okay. We learned that you can kill with a stiletto heel. Important mm. knowledge. Yes. Very Good important. to know if you're I've, ever in a situation like that. I've that, always you know, thought, weapon. like, at night when I'm, like, going out and, like, mm -hmm. I have my shoes on, I'm like, I always have a weapon on me. Yeah. Like, if someone tries to get me, and it was proof. Yeah, you're you're prepared. So I think maybe I've learned With that I need to off. bring, I need to start wearing heels when I go out at night. I'm leaving that one. All right. Oh, God. All right, Sarah Stratton, <laughs> save us. What did you learn tonight? Oh, for the deep meanings. That there's can be really creepy relationships where people want to be with you forever <laughs> and ever and ever. Those are called stalkers. And you're supposed to run away. And no one mm -hmm. in the show seems to run away. I learned from like my outside perspective, just run. If just anyone run. comes up to you and is like, forever and always, see you later. Mm -hmm. I'm good with this week. <laughs> you know what I learned tonight? What did you learn? Women are always right. That is incredible. <laughs> Hold on. Take that away. Hold on. More specifically, Sarah is always right. What? <laughs> Thank you. What? <laughs> I'm glad you finally learned these things. And we're going to get into it in a minute because it has to do with, I'll just say, Sam and Nicole. But before we get into that, we got to mm -hmm. get into the start. Our lead, Sookie, and of course, Adventures in Fairyland. Everything is, are they in Fairyland? Is that what we decided to call it? Why not? Because she's always Sounds good. It's like limbo. It's, a, it's like a theme park, you know? Like yes. Fairyland. You got the chandeliers and you're hanging out, having a good time. Let's start off with, of course, Bill and Eric. I did not understand this first conversation. Like, for me, I don't know if it went, like, normally I'm on top of, like, Bill and Eric dialogue because their dynamic, I feel like it's been constantly growing. Okay. They've gotten to the point of, like, friendship. And this was, like... Eric just almost taunting him the whole time. Mm -hmm. But he's the most I got of this conversation was that now 
Eric was against Bill and kind of going off on his own to be like this independent force. But the reasoning behind it completely went over my head. Like, I did not understand the content of this conversation, I, and he, I didn't like it. He just lost his sister. Yeah. I, obviously. Well, okay. That's, so that's, that's what I got from him is that he lost his sister and he didn't feel like Bill cared but or helped him like or cared. there was, like, a solid three minutes of dialogue, mm-hmm. and it could have been done in one second from what I got out of it. Like, it, was, it just should have been, like, Bill, you really didn't help that much, and I hate you, and now I'm going to go do my own thing. Like, there was t- so much talking, and I, I and didn't flying. think it was needed. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there was more flying. Eric can already fly. Is that really that big of a deal? Yeah, I know, right? Loved him flying in the room, though. Yeah, would you, any, did you pick up anything on that, Scott? And that just that entry, Because there was a lot there. I'm going to hit you guys with the questions, so be prepared. Oh, okay, go ahead and, and hit me with the question, then. Did okay. I just ready? clarify that I did not understand <laughs> the scene? I feel like that's just unfair. Does Eric still love Suki? Oh, gosh, yes. Eric. Yes. Eric. yes, Eric does, too, yes. That's what I'm asking. Two? Yes, that I do. Bill says two? I think there's well, I still think there's something there with Bill too, but he's still all wrapped up in his own world. He has to get real, rid of like Lilith before he can mm-hmm. like, receive the love mm-hmm. again. Yeah, he's still gotta go. But I definitely got the vibe that that Eric still does. So yeah. this was all a play on Eric just messing with Bill's head that that Bill still has a torch for Sookie. Is that what we're saying? Because he said, Oh, of course it's up to the fairy. Mm-hmm. Once again, we're being mm-hmm. dictated by the fairy. See, and I didn't like that. I didn't I didn't like that point of view. Like I understand that Eric's like overwhelmed by grief for Nora, but yeah. the reason he has so much grief for Nora is because once he loves someone, he loves them forever. And he loved Sookie, mm-hmm. so why would the blame go transfer to her? Like if in his character it is like once you get to his mm-hmm. like be part of his like inner circle that he never lets you go. Because we've said that he never let Pam go. Yeah. Like he still has feelings for her. So I didn't feel like it was right for him to blame Sookie unless it was only taunting Bill. Well, I think it was he was blaming S- Bill, Bill's reaction, and it was blaming it on Sookie, not necessarily on Sookie, Sookie. herself. Gotcha. It was more of the roundabout way of blaming Bill. I'm moving and the computer angry. around right now. Just was that we, your question? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just moving the computer right now just to see if we get the chat roll going, right. because they are our fourth co-host That's as right. well. So l- l- send us your comments. I'll know in a second here if it's working, but speaking of Sookie, and your favorite, your man... You're Mr. Warlow. He is my man of the season. Fuck him in that. He is evil. No, he's not. No, I'm... he's not. And I, cr- I mean. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Scott has something to no, say. No, I was going to say, with the evil part, remember that whole scene when she got out of the shower? I wanted to find out what your thought was on that. Remember Something when like when... coming out yes, of the face. I, yes, I want to know what your thought back. was. Yeah. If I thought that was evil? Yes. Yeah, so or like, was that him or like, I, what was going on with that? Because I, I feel like ask you he that. has like some clinginess issues. <laughs> um, Just a little. <laughs> like, on the line of obsessive yeah. clinging, clinginess. But I think that's just he's been tormented for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah. It's... And he still is a good guy through it all. <laughs> it's been 6,000 years, man. Well, wait, and, oh, also, that is some vampire blue balls, if you ask Yeah, me. but Come how on. did he know about her 6,000 years in the past? That's where I was also confused a little bit. I Can think he's me? just been waiting for this woman who's okay. Like Fay and willing mm-hmm. to be like his vampire okay. bride, and it's from like this descendants. So it comes from not exactly Sookie because if he predicted Sookie, that's, that's that'd be even more creepy. <laughs> it was more of the promise that eventually okay. there would be someone Somebody with the like. properties to give okay. him this fulfilled life that he would never have to succumb to the evilness of being a vampire, and that they can just live off of each other communally forever and ever and ever, which is creepy, but very so creepy. Good. And Shazam, we have the chat roll. We have We're our four goes. Yes, guys, we are live. So send us your comments. Send us your theories. Who's right? Who's wrong? Of course, this episode, Sarah is right because women are always right. Anyway, let <laughs> us know. So, all right. I feel like that's giving me too much credit. And like next week, I'm just gonna be bashed. You, you like I feel like this is foreshadowing like my downfall. So you think <laughs> when you're put up on the pedestal, like, you're ready? To and you be. just know you just like get slammed. <laughs> I'm just waiting. You know who else does that? True blood. Obviously. Puts you on the pedestal and then knocks you out. So this could all be a setup. Um, I don't like this. Because remember, we've been saying it. Some, I forget who, who kept saying for weeks, Warlow does not take rejection very well. I forgot who said that. Yeah. Let me know, chat I'm, roll. I'm guessing you said it. Because <laughs> hey, anyway. 
<laughs> I mean, but we do get that Tiki has to come to this decision. Yeah. The yes. ultimatum mm -hmm. of being vampire bride for life or helping. But I, f I felt like she came to that decision last week. <laughs> yeah, I do too. So it was interesting that they rehashed, oh, I'm getting the pointy mm -hmm. fingers. No, that's a great point. Didn't you? Like, at the end of yeah. last week, I thought that she was, like, felt the guilt and was committed. And this week, we kind of had her rethinking so would you call like tonight basically a filler episode? Oh, no, I wouldn't. I, I felt like they were, last week was sort of the, the reloading, the filler episode to kind of like reload the gun to like do all the crazy stuff again on this episode. Because I felt like they revealed a lot more in this episode okay. than they did last episode. And then obviously two ago was when we had all the craziness with, you know, yeah, and Bill and the I governor. I think that, you know, they, they switch it up in chunks, too. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you get that crazy episode where every yeah. storyline's like punch, punch, punch. Like these are all action moments. But what they've been doing lately is I feel like half the storylines kind of have their action moments and mm -hmm. half the storylines get their filler moments. So you kind of get both out of mm. every episode. And sometimes it's concerning though because you automatically have favorites in the show. And it's like whatever your favorites are doing, like that don't point to me. <laughs> like, <I'm, laughs> like I have uh, I might be a little swayed. But you know whatever characters you cling to, like that's overall the impression you get. Oh, okay. So like for me, I'm really into the Sookie Warlow thing, so I was like, we already covered this. Okay. We, we need more. But good things to come, right? It, yeah, it or just kind it, of. Did it feel too, I don't know, because again, going back to the forever and everything, it felt very, you know, odd. Like, yeah, I feel like she, he, even though it was like 6,000 years and he's been waiting for her, like, again, like, she did make a, she said, oh, it would have been great. Why couldn't you just ask me to go to a movie? Or, like, it did feel weird. Like, great oh, let's line. be married forever and ever and ever and be together. And it was very Uncomfortable. I mean, I kind of feel like if Sookie and Warlow don't work out, Warlow and Violet could have a great relationship. Right? <laughs> that was going to be our next thing, because like, the two fantastic. forever and ever. They have their minds set. It's like one and one always, and yeah. never looking back. Mm -hmm. I'm just listening. I'm, I'm taking it, I'm taking <laughs> it all in. Side? What's that? I don't know. Do you agree with us? Yes, Absolutely no. not. Um, <laughs> what I was going to say is actually, I think I think it was Kira Danielle was writing. Oh, I was, I'm sorry. It's Amar One. Notice how she had a black lace dress for Ben. And then when she was going to give herself up to Bill, it was a white lace dress. Flashback to season one. So it's Second like, mm -hmm. flashback, I believe the black lace dress has also been used in prior seasons as Sookie's funeral dress. And if I'm... Are you calling the, mm. the big death is Sookie coming up? I mean... No. Mm -mm. I'm not saying that. No, I'm saying no. that the fact that she's using, like, her ceremonial, like, vampire bride dress mm -hmm. is the same dress that she's worn to a funeral, mm -hmm. I think is interesting. When we've talked about everyone's turmoil, especially Jessica this season. She's been just... Her esteem, self-esteem is just down on the ground. Yeah. And now... Think about Sookie. She's been lied to. I, uh, this episode was, was called Dead Meat, but I almost think it's like what you see is not what you get. Should have been tonight's theme. Because she felt lied to with her family, everyone, and now Bill's become a monster in her eyes because all he cares about is the end result. I don't care. I don't care, mm -hmm. Sookie. You know, I'm sorry you're going through your drama. He's all I, like big picture, kind of. Yeah. yeah. But it's also, he. Bill said, seems to be big picture, but really, he's only trying to save his friends as well. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not really... I feel like he's not making Im like huge moves to save all of vampire kind. Because he's not going public. He's not doing anything. He's still focused on his same little group of vampires. Yeah, I thought that was that was odd anyway. Why mm -hmm. just on these few vamps from Mississippi and Bomb Tom and whatnot? Yeah. And I feel like Bill could very easily... Hold on. Flashback. Does <laughs> Bill know about... Yes, Bill knows about the HPV virus because of Nora. So Bill, with all of his daylight walking power, could very easily just go to the media himself and be like, these people are putting a virus in our, in our blood supply. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm surprised that card hasn't been played. But yeah, then it's... remember, humans, I imagine they're not, they don't all get along with Vance. No, and they almost would think, well, is that necessarily cares? a bad thing? Yeah, I exactly. think that was sort of the thing because the whole governor's propaganda was trying to work to divide humans and vampires but i was wondering and thinking if you think the same thing is that maybe bill's trying to go in and when he goes in he'll do a more of a wider release of saving everybody you know opening the doors letting everybody out of the jail kind of thing like i don't know that's why i envision too that he would basically try to take care of do a little bit more the whole thing at the vamp camp if he could yeah like just get rid of 
all the obstructions and open up the doors and let everybody out kind of thing. That's By what I was wondering. the power of Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking. I don't know what it, if you guys were on that kind of same vibe. What are you about to say? Nah, okay. I, I'm just trying to figure out as well the rash decisions everyone's made this season. Sookie. Okay, she's got Warlow after her. Bill's a mm -hmm. monster, yet I'm trying to tie this in with Sam. Mm -hmm. What happened there? Oh, it's... it's <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> no one can have a completely happy life. You gotta mm -hmm. add in a little bit of that... What is that? Like, it's stirring the pot, you know? Stirring Sam, the pot? Com yes. Completely, like, making it just a little complicated. <laughs> he was stirring something, all right. That's no, for sure. <laughs> but just, I mean, it's like... Suki goes in at that one moment, and they mentioned it being bad timing. It's like the moment they declare their love for each other, and Suki's like, oh, wait, don't forget about me. Can't completely let go of your love for me now. Why? What was her motivation behind that? That's what I, I want to get at. I don't think that's motivation. I, I kind of think that's like real life. I feel like that always happens. The guy that she's not really paid attention to for six seasons, who's always had a thing for her, and all of a sudden, yeah. I have feelings for you? And, say, and passing like in the background. When, when she hasn't been to work, by the way, when you've been like, I find your ass, girl. <laughs> you know, and then but she hasn't so been there. Then she loves her. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah, it was very. But off Suki has to have at least two people kind of in love with her at all times, <laughs> and then there's like the underlying ones that like are always going to be in love with yeah, her. Fair enough. So like two are like, ha like you can see the love right now. You saw a little glimmer of Sam, and obviously you have Warlow, and Eric, and Bill over there, like. Hate her, and I'll see. Hasn't mentioned Suki in forever, but like they have to overlap. There always has yeah. to be like two kind of fighting for her. Now, was but it, overall, all five of them all secretly kind of want. Her. Was it something like I was been wondering too? Is it something alluding to the books? Like, are they trying to go back on that path a little bit? Because I was kind of, I was very surprised at the fact that they sort of brought that back up again tonight. Were you at all? You know, keeping your options open, <laughs> right? Oh my God. But notice, did you notice Sam started tearing up, though? Because it, yeah. why, deep down inside, why, I've always wanted her. Yeah. And now? But now he's got more important things on the way. N now right? he's just, he's distracted. He's got a lot of other things yeah. going on. Responsibility mm -hmm. is knocking on the door. Well, speaking of Sam, let's get into that whole pack battle and Sam and Nicole and Nicole's mom and... And Ricky and Danielle. And yeah. Yes. Okay, and of course, shout out to Danielle, to Jamie Gray Hyder, yes. who was here a few weeks ago. She was good to see her back. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going on with all C? Do we love him now again? Is he back on the good side? He got back on my good side today. Oh, he's always been on my good side, though. Oh. <laughs> see, we have our favorites over here. <laughs> but but, but I, I will say he definitely did. I, I like the whole Wolfpack coup. You know, the whole, did you know. You? I did. Because Why? Because it had to happen. Why? It had to happen because he he basically to them betrayed betrayed them, so they had to and attempt Ricky's to overthrow a scary him. Person. Yeah, and Ricky was like trying to exert her power, and I love that line. What did she say? Like, oh, her vote doesn't have the balls to like finish me off or whatever. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. Like, it sort of had to happen because of this whole weird. It just felt like a. I mean, we've been seeing it coming. Yeah, this weird yeah. storyline that was just kind of a throwaway storyline. So I felt like they had to do something with it, and this had to happen. And so I th I thought it was really. It I was completely good. agree. So this, and I thought it was great in a way that we saw Ricky and Danielle. Yes, on the same team and against such him. A callback to the initial mm -hmm. moment of like Danielle really making an impact was with her and Ricky were both yes. hooking up mm -hmm. with Alcide and just yeah. taking that and totally flipping it for them to be against him. I yeah, loved. I love that too. And how about that seven foot tall where bitch? Dude, that was she was the blonde. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where did she <laughs> no, where did come, she come from? from, right? Wow. <laughs> kind of big. Yeah. I kind of love it. <laughs> it was very bizarre. We had yeah. some serious chick fights tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. Like, oh, quite yeah. Quite a bit, and there was no mercy. Oh, in any of that. yeah. Some serious. It, Loved it. We got the fans even saying, it seems to me that she, I guess referring to um, Ricky, she's still on the V. Well, no, I feel like I Ricky's so. always been angry. She totally could be still on the She v. could be, but I think she, no, yeah, she's, she's, she's got the anger issues with him. She's always had, like, she's a killer, I feel like. That's how I would almost describe her. Like, she says, I'll see, like, doesn't have the balls, but mm -hmm. Ricky is a killer. Like, that's part of her blood. That's part of her makeup. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care who she stomps on, and... Yeah, she, you know, was, she was egging him on, She too. doesn't have the mercy gene. Mm -hmm. If she's on V, wouldn't she have put up a better fight against all C? I mean, I'll, have you seen Alcide? I haven't, but I'm sure you two have. <laughs> <laughs> no. She would have put up a bigger fight. 
So I just think that's within her character. That you know? it could have happened? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a great fight, though. I'll give him kudos to that. I, uh, like, there was I, a kick where she flew a good five feet, and mm-hmm. I was like... I oh. like the uppercut. I'm sorry. That was awesome. Laid her out. Done. So what's left? What's going to happen? I mean, all seed left. All seed's mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. And where did all seed end up? Back at Merlot's mm-hmm. with Sam. But no, not back at Merlot's. Alcide's not had a big connection to Merlot's. Him being at Merlot's yeah. and drinking is a turn, and yeah. I think a complete foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. The two drinking them together. Oh, mm-hmm. he's going to be like hired. They mentioned Terry being gone. Yeah, they're going to be besties Alcide's gonna now. Alcide's going to be like the new like chef. Yeah, they're going to be besties. There's definitely they're they're teaming up. Food. They're teaming up for sure. I, yeah. could, I could see that he's going from a contractor to a chef. I I, I I could see maybe they'll build an actual <laughs> restaurant that doesn't just have a trailer. They're they're know. definitely going to team up to some you know to go out mm-hmm. on. They're they're teaming up. They're, there's no doubt about sure. it. They are. And that, that was foreshadowing. There. And that goes to the plan of like we've said that next season they're probably gonna it's the whole bring it back yeah. to Bon Tom. And if Alcide's now there instead of in Sh- Shreveport or mm-hmm. whatnot, well, I'm looking forward to my notes. I think. It could be the pages end. Pages and pages right over there. Uh-huh. Yeah. It could be the end of our boy Alcide. Don't say no. Yep. No. 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 True yes. Blood I'm tells you. No. Over yes. True True Blood not. tells you no. things. No. No. Yes. No. no. Did you not hear the line? No. Shall, I'm look, let me look for the line. No. Let's hear the I line. I want to hear the line. I want to hear the line. Okay. Hold. You got to come up with a real quick though. Yeah. I'm going to come up real, I'll just paraphrase. <laughs> you don't know when death is coming. Yes. I know. Okay. I know. But they could have been talking about other things. People. He could be a bodyguard. Him. I don't know. No, I'll see. Their storyline is so far removed, and Sam isn't going anywhere. I feel like they could have killed him really no. easily throughout all of these pack fights. They wouldn't have dragged out like the pack story. Yeah, that's why I feel like there's Sam's something story. with him teaming up with and Sam. For exactly. Some, yeah. Like maybe they, later. That had been, they kept having flashes of that and that and his dad for a reason. They're not just gonna like throw it away. I don't think. I think that would be very strange if they did. So, like, like you said, they foreshadow what's going to happen, right? Like in specific lines. Anyway, not necessarily so, right away, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's where they just said death. They don't know season. when death is coming, so it could be the very last season. <laughs> Let us know, chat roll, what you think. Is this the end of the pack? And death is not the end. <laughs> Suki's line. That's right. Other scene. Oh, mm-hmm. Bring Hold it. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Wow, we're getting philosophical here tonight <laughs> at After Buzz TV. And make sure once again go to iTunes. Let us know what you think. And should we move on? I guess we've got uh, this one time in Van. Well, no, I had one other thing. I just one tiny little thing to add. What's up? Yeah. No, I was just curious. Did you guys think it was odd when when Sam just left Nicole and her mom there at the house? She okayed it. It oh. just felt weird. Okay, there was no deadbolt on his front door, and she, he was just gonna leave them. Wouldn't you be thinking if that's the girlfriend you loved and everything? Now all of a sudden he loves her like two days later after beating her. He was just going to leave them at his house? Thank you, know. Scott. Seriously, we were going to be a 30-minute show, but now we're going to go. I'm just no, I was no, asking no, you're you. S- you're spot on. I just had a quick question before we moved on because it was bu- it was bugging me. No, it's bugged everyone. Come on, Janina. I mean, if I was Janina watching right now, Luna, I'd be pissed because it's been three days. He's already impregnated someone else. Yeah. <laughs> And then he was leaving her, leaving her to go to the bar. I was like, I would be leaving my woman there at the, you know, by herself to fend for herself without a deadbolt on my door I in mean, my trailer. Is this plausible? Uh, let, let's talk about reality now. It's been three days since he lost the love of his life. Now he's onto a new love of his life. Mm-hmm. I know it seems he's doing the, he's being the honorable man. He impregnated this young 23 year old man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the silver fox. Which is a great line. Um, but is it plausible? I mean, I've been, are you okay with the writing? I've been, a, I have been against this love connection mm-hmm. since day one. I me both. still don't like it. Mm-hmm. The only part that I'm going to find redeeming about any of this is if Sam, like, gets a kid. Because I do feel like on some level Sam deserves a child. Like, oh, come on. Sam He's deserves with Emma. Sam's kind of the father figure for everyone. Because he, he usually saves everyone every season. Yeah, since he season does. Two. Yeah, and so, he's the owner of the bar, you know, like he's like the father figure there, you know, from everything, from the very beginning. He's always been that kind of fatherly figure for everybody. And people are talking about it right now. People are think that Sam's the one that's going to die. Uh, I think we're all just we're, we're grasping the straw. People are yeah. just trying to get some to die. Yeah. It will happen. This is true blood. Mm-hmm. And if we have time for news and gossip, I'm gonna blow you away. Don't say that. That's Who scary. we think might mm-hmm. die. Mm-hmm. So we gotta move no. quickly. Yeah. Well, Let's oh move God. on to... Uh, I don't know if I can handle yeah, that. I don't know me if either. you can, because it's big. It's big. Either. Okay, so you're giving me scary eyes. Let's mm-hmm. keep talking about something else. <laughs> happy things. Let's, Let's go back to happy things. Let's... Bam camp, so happy. <laughs> Bam, Bam camp. Let's talk about how awesome Anna camp is in Bam camp. <sighs> and a little factoid I found out. Oh. When, she, 
when she got in the fight, this this is a lot of little trivia here. Okay. Remember, I have no life. I'm just no, I'm true blooded. Mm -hmm. Okay. That scene when she fought the the spokes bitch. Yes, the spokes bitch. Which that's what she's called. <laughs> that's what she was called. Yes. I'm only quoting the show, so her. please, if you want to send your hate letters to <laughs> Scott, not me. Yeah, exactly. Okay. When they got in the battle, first off, that lady she was battling. Here's some trivia that's gonna blow your mind. The Asian girl who's playing playing her, she was um, Ralph Macho's girlfriend in Karate Kid too. Boom! She's Whoa! Some, you know. Wow! Boom. We've even got people on the couch I with their like... mouth open right now. I'm just kicking y'all with some knowledge. Yeah. Okay. All Ooh. right. That That's battle, really Anna Camp said it was the toughest scene she shot all season. It took three days. She got sent to the hospital during the battle. Yeah. And she went to the hospital in full um, Sarah Newland regalia. <laughs> so she had the high hair and everything. Uh, she what was, happened? Why? Yeah, why she had to go the to the hospital? hospital? Didn't, didn't specify. So fans, if mm. you guys know, let us know. Absolutely. Mm. So let's talk about everything that's going on here. She's just the boss. But are you okay so with that? It seemed very campy to me. I mean, of course, it was over the top, didn't it? To you, feel that way? Just over the top, crazy. It was so interesting to me because the parts I loved most of this were the over the top. Like the shoe didn't feel over the top to me. <laughs> her like slamming her face into the grate with the blood dripping to like the hissing, starving vampires was good. The parts that threw me off were where she was like, "I'm a businesswoman," and at the very end where she mentioned like. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because I'm like, wait, where did our, like, God-fearing Sarah Newland go? Like, I'm pretty sure you can't justify this mm -hmm. one with the Bible. Like, she's been justifying, like, her murders of vampires, her doing this whole camp with all that. But how is she going to justify murder of a human? God forgives. Yeah. I... In her eyes, she is so out there. It was for the greater good, yeah. for the greater cause. I and that is, know. once again, that is... The writer's social commentary. Mm -hmm. Once again, you know that's what this is what they specialize mm -hmm. in. Yeah. So I think maybe that was their attempt at that. Yeah, I will say that's what I was getting at Westbur too. The, the fact that yeah, the West, the fact I'm that she went so far over. I need Sarah. Out. I need Sarah. New, I need like a speech. Do you feel Sarah like she went too seat. far to that to where it doesn't seem believable? Because I did think the same thing JC was saying is that I think that that was her way of justifying because she could not let the spokes bitch be able to get that out there with the information that they had infected the true blood with, you know. I mean, I understand, these. like, the evil motivation, yeah. but I just don't see how Sarah Newland as a person is going to be able to, like, I want to hear her rationalize killing this woman next episode. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so you, yeah, so you feel like she went over the, too I far. I feel like she crossed the line. Like, she's always been against vampires. I don't think we've ever seen her mm -hmm. have this, like, harshness against a human. Yeah, you're right. It was the first time that she's killed someone, right, like, like she's as a human? she's always been, like, think about even, like, Jason. Like, I disagree, guys. No, I do get the first time that she was killed, like she killed a human, wasn't that the first time she's yeah. actually gone that far? I've which never I was seen shocked by that. To a human before. But I got the justification of why she felt she had to. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter whatever's in the way of her goal. Mm -hmm. That's that's where just I got the just justification. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what. She is the big baddie. Fine, fine. Her in her <laughs> white suit. Come on. <laughs> you called it. You knew something was going to mm -hmm. happen. No. The moment she walked out in that white suit and like this, I'm like, hmm, this woman's wearing white for a reason. You just know that that's like aching for blood or dirt or something. Things that women think of. I never thought of that. I'm sorry. That's... That she's going to get dirty? Yeah. Oh, completely. Okay, so <laughs> well, let's talk about more getting dirt upon her. How she makes her husband, Steve Newland, run the hamster wheel. Just so she like, gives up the clue. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing's going to stop this woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course, Newland staying true to character, such a weasel. Oh my gosh, I was totally <laughs> thinking the song, oh, what's the song, Rat in a Cage? Like, oh, never mind. I'm getting nods <laughs> from the couch. No, I'm I know, you're, I know what you're talking about, too. Or this is all I was thinking, I'm like, he's such yeah. a rat, and he's a rat in a cage, cage, and it's like playing in my head. Yeah. Um, He's just such a wuss. He is. He's become, but has he become more of a wuss? It seems like to me as we moved along, like just eat more and more. You I think? Mean, he's I always do. had that sorrow. Do you remember when he had like a puppy? Uh, that's true, yeah. Because he, he just seemed very whiny puppy. tonight he, and very like. I think that he's fine with dying. I'm fine with him dying. I'm mm -hmm. fed up with him. Yeah, he's annoying. I wanted him to drink the true blood and get H. PV. <laughs> Hep V. <laughs> HPV, something else. Contact totally your Totally different, okay, yes. Thank you for that. I'm like, I don't know. Initial, there's a B in there. And if he got that, I would be fine. Like, the fact that James saved him, I was like, oh, and that's going to be your downfall. Mm -hmm. You know? 
I, what I found most interesting is that all season we've tried to figure out how do they all get into the room? How do all the vamps, mm-hmm. how do Jess, Tara, g- give me some more, you know, James and Steve Newland. Violet. 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 Pam. Pam. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's been it's Sarah Newland. Mm-hmm. Who would have thunk it? I would have... Mm-hmm. Never thought I would have thought no. it was Burrell, anyone else but Anna Camp. Yeah, she was such a minor character in seasons past, you know, just to, like, see her take such a lead this season, and, and it's incredible. Well, yeah. let's dissect all these other people that are going on in Vamp Camp from Jess and Jason. What's mm-hmm. what's going on there? I mean, are you, are you are you I mean Jess and, and James, James. James. Like, they I'm all like, have well, three James. Well, and Jason, you know, Jason's in the He's mix there him. as well. Well, that's my question. He is a yeah. new consort. Mm-hmm. Or feeding person. <laughs> so that's my question. I, is it James or Jason for Jess? Oh, at this point, I would say she's all about James. She doesn't care. She doesn't care what Jason is right now. Is that mm-hmm. fair? No. I mean, no. no. I mean, this, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. This season, it just seems like they're just breezing through people mm-hmm. and not really justifying the reasons why, the transition why. This is why I'm with this person. This Jason risked his life for, for mm-hmm. Jess, and this is how she re- repays him? Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah. But, I mean, we talked about this last week, but the initial act of her having sex in a room while he's standing outside guarding her for her life. And then this week, there was no even mention of him from her, like, once she was caught. Like, yeah. there was no care in the world. I mean, can I say, uh, in, a, in a way, do you think it's the fact that she's sort of taking advantage of him? Like, he's kind of the old, th- you know, you just kind of take advantage sometimes of the people you love and that you've known forever. And now James is like the new fresh meat. And he's, you know, coming in and being such a savior, like not trying to have sex with her that day when they were in the the vamp camp. Uh, what was it? The mm-hmm. ex- I forget what sex room that was or whatever it was. So it was like all of a sudden like, oh, she's sort of just taking advantage of the fact that Jason's there and sort of she kind of feels like will always be there for him. And now James is the new guy that she's all hot for. I don't know. I'm just mad at them. That's where I was getting that, her behavior. Okay, but if we get past this and like Jess and Jason become friends, is there a future with James and Jessica? Of course. (laughs) He's the good guy. I'm more for James and Jessica than I am for Nicole and Sam. Oh, I definitely. Me Completely. too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a I'll, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to play yes. that one. I'll play it after yes. the show, for our after after show. <laughs> but um, before that, well, let's move on to Jason and um, Violet. Yes. Believe that's her mm-hmm. name, right? Okay. I, what do we think? What's what's going on? I'm thinking Violet is doing something to Jason that Jason has done to every woman throughout his arc <laughs> in True Blood. He's been the one that seduces, not the seduce E. Mm-hmm. In a weird way, no, yes. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wear Panthers. I've heard of them. Hello. The oh yeah, yeah. That one section where he was oh, like yeah. raped for a week. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but in the, no, I'm saying it in the fact that Violet's gonna end. He is towards the end of her her speech with Jason. Which that speech was so good, by the uh, way. Yes. You guys love it. Yes. Oh, oh my the, God. She is a. Crazy oh, that was Catholic so awesome! Yeah, the whole old vampire. school Catholic and like, you know, you will like it, and and, and when it's to my satisfaction, I mean, it you was will woo me and oh, it happened. So good, and he bought it at at the very very end. He was still like, you know, was, <laughs> he was still freaked out, but I think that's just laying the groundwork for season seven. It was hot. He was like, oh, and the very end, he's just like, cool. And he's turning his neck and everything. It's so I mean, funny. I, I feel like we've seen Jason with almost every type of woman. Like, if we go back all the yeah. way to season one and we had Dawn mm-hmm. from her lots, like, she That's reminds right. me more of, like, the ta- she's, like, the take charge. She totally put him in his place. And I think that element coming back with Violet tonight. But he's had... <laughs> He loves the crazies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're very attracted to him. Mm-hmm. The only normal one I feel like he's ever had would be Jess. And, and I feel like they have, like, the most, I guess, one of the most true relationships for Jason. For It'll Jason, be interesting, yeah. but yeah. I kind of wish, how do we, how do I say this? How are we going to like Violet? Because you have to find something that makes the character likable. Mm-hmm. And right now, I've yet to see anything like that. Yeah, I agree. And it felt very, again, very quick. And it was sort of the same thing that, like, now Jason's sister, Sookie's dealing with is this, now she's like forever and ever and ever with Jason. And it just felt very weird and contrived and fake, and I'm not really getting it. Like, so I don't really get her. So I guess we have to learn more about her and yes, why we're exactly. supposed to like her or we need to learn, not like her. We need to learn or, why everyone respects her. Yeah, and like she, yeah, why she's running the undoubtedly the, like has that power. She has over the power. Mm-hmm. Um, and the vampires there. 
She's running running that gen pop room. I mean, it was just her it, and Pam. Yeah. <laughs> what? I yeah. Was, so. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, I, Pam, like when Pam's scared of someone, you know that there's something about mm-hmm. them. And she, Pam's like, I'm not going near that. Yeah. Now, could she be a descendant from um, Lilith and Warlow? Well, I, I guess we all are, but I mean, I mean they, <laughs> they all are. This is a TV show. <laughs> we live in this reality. Sorry! No. Um, I have no idea. Um, I feel like Warlow doesn't have children. We're going to find out hopefully soon. Yeah, I don't know. Soon. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, you're, I, it's, a good, it's a good theory because I think it's possible. Sort of I'm just throwing it out there yeah. and... We're That's running she, out of time. She gets her desperate for everything from. She gets it from Warlow. <laughs> so. But we we still have to touch upon Belfour Manor. Mm-hmm. Of course. The life uh, of the loss of Terry and still mm-hmm. the aftermath and everything everything that's happened since. And what I, yes, Sarah, you want to jump in? I was in. just going to say, like, they figured it out so quickly. Like, when Lafayette, like, told them, like, you've got two millions or whatever dollars. Mm-hmm. And they, um, like, Arlene was so fast to be like, Oh, he committed suicide. He knew this was coming, and it was Justin McGrathy or whatever mm-hmm. who did it. I was like, well, that happened quickly. Like, good detective work, Arlene. Mm-hmm. But it, it was, I felt like it just happened in a flash. They came to, like, every conclusion, and, like, the more, more of the drama actually came from the family dynamic yeah. versus the murder dynamic, mm-hmm. which I thought was very interesting and a different twist. Yeah, so they, they glossed over it. I mean, I, I the only reason why I would think he, she would get the whole suicide or knew that it was happening was because of the life insurance policy only being four days old. But yeah, like, how did she know who it was? Which I thought was weird, too. Like, how she knew it was Justin right away and then sort of glossed over it, and that was kind of odd. But the family dynamic part was great because it was very realistic of, like, yeah. what families go through in a situation like that. So I love that. You know, what I thought was, I kind of had a problem with was Lala revealing that in front of all the uh, people. I, I, yes, I agree. That was weird. Yeah. Something so sensitive like yeah. that. You're gonna and personal. Yeah. That you, you're about to receive $2 million mm-hmm. instead of pulling her off to the side and just say, because you, money changes mm-hmm. people. True, but that's also maybe one of the reasons that he did put it in front of everyone. Just because, like, the last time we saw her, she was like, Drunk and thought she was like hallucinating to see Bill, but so maybe he just wanted to make sure that like everyone kind of knew so they could all support her and make sure that she was making good decisions and not going off the deep end. And I mean, right now she doesn't even want the money. If maybe she would get it and throw it away, it's, I think it's good that other people know like what is in front of her and like what she has to deal with. Okay, people to take care of her. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. that was going to be my question. Basically, what mm-hmm. is Arlene's fate? Because I'm still, I'm, I told you, I read, I've been finding out mm-hmm. about the books, and she mm-hmm. takes a different trajectory in the books. So I would love for them to pay homage to that slightly. Yeah, I was wondering, too, because like, when she brought up the whole Justin thing, and then basically Andy said he wasn't going to really do anything, and I thought, now is she going to feel like she has to go out and be the vigilante and get revenge and go off now with this money and like figure out a way to get back and get take care of him? I don't know. It really sucks for both Andy and Arlene to both be in the position where they want revenge on someone, mm-hmm. and they know the people they want revenge on, and both of them are sitting in these positions where they can't really make action. Like, you've got Andy, who still knows that Jessica and Bill are the ones who are responsible for mm-hmm. killing his daughters, but he's been talked down and talked back to, mm-hmm. you know, make an agreement, make it safe for everyone else, and Arlene mm-hmm. now is like... I know who killed my, or is responsible for the suicide slash mm-hmm. death of my husband, and she's also Andy's talking her back. So they're like sitting in these like sitting deck positions with like the resentment's gonna boil up in yeah. one of them. Mm-hmm. I don't. Andy Andy had a line, and he told it was to Arlene. You want me to you want me to go after Justin? Mm-hmm. It's not gonna bring him back. Yeah. And in essence, I think it was just cathartic for him to say mm-hmm. that out loud. Yeah. So now for her, mm-hmm. that's where I was thinking is that's why she's going to have to go Exactly, out and, and True Blood loves parallels. Mm-hmm. True Blood loves to put people in those same positions. We saw it with Alcide in his power mm-hmm. versus Bill in his power. We knew that they both had power at the beginning of the season, and we knew that they were both going to take it differently. Now we have Andy and Arlene both in the same position. They, they're not going to both take it the same way. Yep. That's not how True Blood works. Okay. Well, I'm trying. We, mm-hmm. we got to start wrapping up a little bit. So, I'm trying to. Any final thoughts on the episode before we move on to our trivia? 
Are these final thoughts or are these predictions? No, 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 just of the episode. Hmm. A- anything we might have missed? I don't think so. I mean, one of my favorite moments was when Sookie was taking a shot. I believe it was of Southern yeah, Comfort. Yeah, Southern Comfort, yes. And she's taking the shot of Southern <laughs> Comfort, and it's like, shot of Southern Comfort? Oh, shot of LC taking a shot. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, shot Lots of shot. Lots of drinking. Yeah, yeah. There was a theme in this one. There was. Drinking. Yep. There was a high dosage <laughs> of alcohol. I'm going to need a drink after this show. <laughs> Good Lord. What do you think's in here? No. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, it's time to move on to um, our little game. Shall we play a game? That's right. It's back for <laughs> True Blood Trivia. All right. This is the moment where we ask a question. To our fans, chat roll, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, people down the street, whoever's watching us, we're going to ask you a little question. And if you get it right, we put your name in a drawing. And at the end of the season, we're going to draw one name out of a hat, and you will win a signed poster by all the guests we've had this season. So last, se- uh, last week, I actually gave you guys, I stumped you guys. Mm-hmm. For once, I stumped you guys. Some of some. you guys. We some. still got some answers yeah. in this hat. We usually we have like three times as much, so as many answers. So last week's question was, what was Ginger played by Tara Buck's last name? Does anyone know? Well. Not all at the same time. <laughs> all right. Uh, I do now. Yeah, because you guys read the comments. It was a bit of a trick question. It was. Mm. Okay, come on. Come okay, on. okay, fine. <laughs> it was a trick question because... It's never been said. Mm-hmm. Nan Flanagan referred to it a few seasons ago that she's been glammed so many times that she doesn't even remember her last name. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who answered, great call. But now it's time to pick a name yeah. from the hat. And that was good because when I was trying to think about it, I was like, I forget her last name. And that was it was a really good question because she didn't have one. All right. All right. Out of the magic hat, who is the winner Ooh, this I got week? to try. Yeah. <laughs> El Nino 101. Congratulations, Yay. El Nino 101. You now qualify for the wonderful prize coming up in two weeks. We've got Gosh, two, two weeks. We've got two episodes Thank left. You. So with that said, let's move on quickly to I'm gonna just keep it short, news and gossip. After Buzz TV. I news. was I was gonna cut news all together, but I have to reveal this. Oh goodness. There there could be a big death. Oh goodness. Mm-hmm. And this death could be huge. Mm-hmm. Earlier this week we had Again, Kristen Kristen Bauer on Access Hollywood Live and she was there with Billy Bush and Holly Robinson Pete. And they had a great talk about, you know, what it was like being on the show so many seasons and the rumor of the possible death of Eric. Mm. And okay, okay, everyone's well, everyone's throwing up names, throwing mm-hmm. out names. But Kristen became emotional. She teared up. And then Billy Bush was asking, "Are you okay? Oh my gosh, are you okay?" And then I don't know if she was trying to cover it up, mm-hmm. but she just said, "Well, well, you work with someone seventy hours a week, and it doesn't matter if he dies tomorrow, next week, or in ten years, you're still going to get emotional about it." But it was rather striking. So guys, watch it if you get a chance, because. Could it be the I end mean, of Eric? Eric because Eric is on a quite the renegade mm-hmm. spree. And if you see Alpha's the poster own. for this season, mm-hmm. the title is No One Lives Forever. And mm-hmm. whose face is on the cover of it? Eric. Mm. I have mm. a few more. Questions, but questions. Yes, I have a few mm. more, but we're going to leave them for next. We'll save them for next week because we are running short on time. So let us move on to predictions. Mm. And now. You're after Buzz All right. TV. What's going to happen next week? Who's dying? Um, Who's staying? I mean, I'll see. It's going to become a bartender at Merlot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen. No and the that. new show the is chef. going to be... <laughs> You know, two guys and a baby, and it's gonna be yep. Sam, Offseed, <laughs> and Nicole's baby. And Nicole's gonna be gone because yes, because Luna's gonna, gonna be like, back. Because Luna's gonna be Luna's back. Gonna come back. That's right. And they're gonna raise the baby. Yeah. And Emma's gonna be the step sister. It's a great. And since Offseed's a carpenter, they'll be able to add on to Merlots, and it'll be really awesome. They need to add like you know one big happy family yeah. in a bar. Scott, what's gonna happen? I'm well, serious. I, I am too. I like this. I like the way you're going with this, and uh, it sounds like a great like spinoff that we could be pitching. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna go with um, I'm still I'm still thinking about Jason being dead. I, I still feel that way that that's gonna be the big death, and maybe they're kind of teasing us with Eric. And the reason why I also got that say is the fact that it was almost felt like you know when Sookie couldn't get a hold of Jason and she was talking about oh I'll see you at the funeral tomorrow morning. I still kept thinking like oh she can't get a hold of him, and I'm like hmm, maybe maybe Violet's gonna do something go a little too far. Something's oh. gonna happen at the end with the whole scene. I don't I know. I'm see, still thinking Jason. I wanna meet, I wanna see Sookie meet Violet. I just feel like that could be a very interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, 
no, you can't have my brother forever. And and then and then Jason should be like Merlo again and be like, you can't have my sister forever. There we go. <laughs> These Great are time. deep cutting predictions, everybody. <laughs> all I'm going to say is next week it's going to be an all Willa episode because we really didn't talk about her this week, and you know how I think she's an awesome character. So I'm. I mean, she, it's not Eric episode yeah. according to Flashes. So no, I'm will, kidding. I can definitely see how Willa could come in there. Mm-hmm. I still say um, I think Nicole might be in trouble. I just. Nah, sorry. She's gonna <laughs> Sam's Sam's baby. Come on. The baby will survive. Mm-hmm. Think the baby? Okay. Yeah. And I think because I just see something in the end, I see Sam being with someone else. Oh, I wonder who you mm. think that is. And I'll leave it at that. So that mm. wraps us up tonight, everybody. Do so you feel like this was oozy but productive? <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Sarah, where Excellent. can they find you? Because obviously you're not on Twitter or Facebook. You, you are not a social media girl. So where can we find you? Here, After Buzz TV. Doing? Tuesday, Team Oh! I swear, by the end of the season, I'm going to make you get a Twitter. Chat roll's going to make you get a Twitter. Scotty, the naughty well, body, where can they find you? Well, I was going to say, we'll just start a Twitter in your name. And we'll tweet out lots oh, of things. Um, they can find me here on Sundays also with uh, Orange is the New Black. We just oh. started today. Nice. Yeah. So and uh, and on the Twitter, S-Man80, S-M-A-N-8-0. Lemieux, why are you booing everybody, man? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, well, well, you know what? Sharon is caring, Steven. Yeah. What other shows can we find you, buddy? He's here everywhere. Oh, I'm just everywhere. Just enjoying the great content that you hosts provide. Oh, oh thank thanks. you. And you can find Shucks. me at JC Rubio TV on Twitter and on Instagram. So for Sarah, Scott, Steven, I'm JC. We're your True Blood After Show. We'll see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you.